Hey guys, so before we get too deep into this video, I want to talk about the elephant in the room, which is this gigantic Nintendo leak that has happened. Basically, what's happened is over on 4chan, someone posted the source code for a ton of old games and systems and stuff, just a gigantic reservoir of old Nintendo information. It's so much stuff, it's taking people a long time to look through the thousands and thousands of files to find anything interesting. But there is a lot of interesting stuff in there. If you like the development process for games and old like beta versions of sprite art and things we never actually got to see, this is a plethora of stuff like that. Since all this stuff is actually coming from hackers who have broken into Nintendo's servers to get this information, I'm not going to be showing any of the images here, but it is out there on the internet and I'm just going to go over some of the more interesting things I've seen. There was some sprite artwork of Luigi that looks a lot like his Smash render. He's getting like stung by a bee, and I've never seen Luigi in that pose besides in Smash, so that's really interesting. This might actually be where Sakurai got this pose for Luigi. In fact, there's tons of unused sprites in there for lots of old Super NES games. There's early designs for Yoshi, which looks much more like a dinosaur. In fact, we found some stuff out about Yoshi's Island. It appears that it may have originally been a game called Super Donkey, which may have been the initial idea for a Super NES Donkey Kong sequel. In this game, it appears you might be playing as Stanley the Bugman. The main character of it looks kind of like that character. This Super Donkey game appears to have been scrapped in favor of going with Donkey Kong Country from Rare. However, a lot of the artwork for it looks similar to Yoshi's Island, so it looks like the game was repackaged as Yoshi's Island eventually. Speaking of Yoshi's Island, there's a lot of interesting stuff in there for that game. They have map artwork that we never got, there is mini games that we never got, and it even appears that baby Mario wasn't initially who Yoshi was carrying through the levels. It was a little baby in a pointed blue hat, and I guess the baby actually would just crawl around and not float around in the bubble like baby Mario does. People digging through these files have also found early Mario World sprites, things like map artwork we never got, and unused enemy sprites. We also had some power-ups we didn't get. Mario has the raccoon tail in some of the images I've seen, but I'm not totally sure if that was actually coming from Mario All-Stars or like a BS Mario 3 coming to Super NES or something like that, but I have seen sprite artwork from this of Mario in the raccoon suit that I've never seen in a Super NES game. I've also seen Mario without his hat in Mario World, which is pretty interesting because that didn't happen until Super Mario 64. We've also seen some unused Star Fox characters, including a human girl, and some sprite work for a side-scrolling Link, which may have been for a BS Zelda 2 on the Super NES. Link also definitely purposely has pink hair in A Link to the Past for some reason, as some early sprite work has that much more prominently featured. People have also found some interesting stuff for N64 games, including high-definition images of stuff from Ocarina of Time and Mario 64's manuals. Stuff like the items in Ocarina of Time or the sticker on the Mario 64 cartridge, we now have high-definition versions of those images. However, like I said, this is all hacked information. This is stuff that hackers actually went into Nintendo servers and basically stole. So it's pretty dubious to really talk about or look at this stuff. Personally, I absolutely love this stuff. I mean, these are the games I grew up with. One of my favorite aspects of Mario Maker has always been getting newer enemies in the older Mario games. In order for all of the different versions of Mario to be interchangeable in the Mario Maker games, you have to add enemies from some of the newer Mario games to the older ones, or at least equivalencies added. And that's always extremely interesting to me. When we get like characters from Mario World showing up in Mario 3 that were never there, or characters in Mario 3 in the original Super Mario Bros, it's just really interesting to see sprites for new things in old games. And this is very similar. Even though I absolutely do not condone hacking into Nintendo servers to get this information, I do find it really fun to look through. Seeing the sprite work that never happened for old games I grew up with is just super fun. It's like I love those old games and now I'm getting something new for them. It's really exciting to see that stuff for someone like me. There are things like personal emails between developers in this gigantic leak, so I totally understand stuff like that is really sensitive and obviously Nintendo doesn't want the public looking at that sort of thing. And even from like an artist's perspective, if you're working on something and you're making, you know, rough drafts of things and you don't finish something, sometimes you don't want someone looking through your sketchbook, basically, and that's what's happening here. I find it really interesting, but I could totally understand being a developer or one of the artists that worked on this game and feeling like, you know, a little violated here. 
it is a little dubious of us to look at this sort of stuff, but hey, it's out there on the internet. I'm not gonna cover it, but if you wanna go look for it, it is out there. Also, people are still hunting through all the files here, so I'm sure more and more stuff will come to light over time. I will say one final thing that was found in here is extremely interesting, and that is the fact that Luigi was originally planned for Mario 64. That's been a rumor for an extremely long time with Mario 64 fans. This leak finally confirms that. Luigi was, in fact, originally planned to be in Super Mario 64. I've even seen some stuff saying that there was originally a, like, split-screen two-player mode. I don't know for sure if that's true, but yeah, Luigi was, in fact, planned for Mario 64. Luigi being in Mario 64 has been an urban legend with Mario 64 fans for as long as I can remember. There's this very infamous statue in the game that people think is saying L is real 2401. And many people took that L to mean Luigi is real, and the 2401 to be some sort of cryptic hint at how to unlock Luigi. Well, things just got even stranger with this leak showing us that Luigi was in fact planned for the game. Over on Smashboards, the CJ Brian wrote, Super Mario 64's Japanese release date was 24 years and one month ago, 2401. L is real, 2401 was a prophecy. So 24 years and one month after the original release of Mario 64, and we're now finding out L is in fact real. Luigi was in fact in Mario 64. So that's absolutely crazy to me that the 2401 L is real urban legend is actually coming true here and it all makes sense. That's crazy. Of course, what might be happening here is that the hackers who actually got this information may have waited until the 24 years and one month date lined up so that this urban legend would come true. They may have just held on to the information before they made it public so that it would all line up. We had a leak a while back for Pokemon sprites from Gold and Silver, early Pokemon designs that was pretty infamous for a while there. And this may be coming from that same time that hackers hacked into Nintendo's server. So they may have just sat on this information for a while. I don't know for sure all the background details to this one, but that might be what's going on. And that might be why this actually fits the 2401 urban legend. Okay, so with all that interesting stuff aside, let's talk about some other things that have been happening. So earlier this week was the Xbox Games Showcase, and we got a further look at Halo Infinite. Right before the Xbox Games Showcase, Sakurai tweeted out this image, and over on my Discord, Chef RD wrote, Guys, look, it's a Halo reference. And if you take a look at the image, it certainly does have a lot of Halo qualities to it. I don't know if this means Master Chief is coming to Smash or what, but it does show Sakurai was probably paying attention to the Xbox Games Showcase. I will say we do already have Microsoft on board for Smash with Banjo being in the game, so getting another Microsoft rep in this second Fighters Pass is totally possible, and Master Chief might be who they'd go with. Another interesting tweet from Sakurai was this one that says, Today in 1984, Pac-Land started operating in an arcade. What's interesting about this tweet is that Sakurai actually deleted it shortly after putting it up. Over on Twitter, Push Dustin wrote, Sakurai tweeted this out and deleted it, confirmed it on my own phone. It was about 50 minutes before this tweet was sent out. In the tweet, Sakurai says, On this day in 1984, Pac-Land was released on the arcades. Push Dustin went on to say, As far as I can tell, Pac-Land was released on August 1st, 1984. So this might mean Sakurai is just preparing tweets for August in advance. So that's true, Pac-Land actually did come out on August 1st, not on, I believe, July 22nd is when Sakurai tweeted this. So either Sakurai screwed up and just had the date wrong, or he is preparing tweets in advance to show up, and on August 1st we'll get the Pac-Land tweet. Another really interesting tweet from Sakurai recently is this one that has Cuphead, Shovel Knight, and Sans all in one image. They look really cool together. Cuphead and Sans, along with Vault Boy, are part of these special me costumes we've been getting. I've been calling them premium or deluxe me costumes. It would be really cool if Shovel Knight got a premium or deluxe me costume soon as well. Shovel Knight is an indie character along with Cuphead and Sans, so I believe that's why Sakurai has those three together. These are big indie game characters that are showing up in Smash. This actually reminds me a lot of what Sakurai said when he tweeted out about the Pollyanna Mother book. He said, Hobonichi's Mother Tribute comic, the back is an advertisement for this book, Smash Bros. If you think about it, maybe this is the only one that can see the world of Mother with the latest hardware. Personally, I have a long relationship. 
basically Sakurai is saying that the Mother series is able to be visually seen on modern day hardware through Super Smash Brothers. And that's pretty similar to what's going on with these indie game characters. They're getting full renders in Super Smash Brothers. So we have Cuphead and Sans as me costumes and Shovel Knight as a assist trophy. And they're all showing up in like modern day Switch hardware, Super Smash Brothers style graphics. And that's really cool to see. While Shovel Knight is already in Smash as an assist trophy, I would absolutely love for him to get a premium or deluxe Mii costume. A playable Shovel Knight is something I know a lot of people wanted, and these Mii costumes are the closest thing you get to a full-fledged playable character. I would love to also do a whole video about potential premium or deluxe Mii costume characters, so I may do that in the future. So King Zell over on Reset Era has been saying some pretty interesting stuff. On my Discord, Mass for Alligator wrote, King Zell appears to be saying that a Direct is coming in August. Ignore the F-Zero Mother 3 message, that was a joke he did. And here's an image of a bunch of recent Reset Era posts from King Zell. The first one says, To be clear, I don't know anything about a Twitter announcements, am just talking about Directs. They then said, Wait for August, nothing for the rest of this month. Then they said, Not in July, guys. Then they have that joke post about Mother 3 and F-Zero, and finally they say, another stop before the main event. That's the most recent post, and I don't know what they mean by another stop. Potentially another stop could mean another mini direct, possibly before we're getting the main event in August, possibly first party Nintendo game announcements or something like that. It's not totally clear what King Zell means by another stop. They did say before that what they were told was Nintendo was showcasing their games in late summer, so something happening in August would line up well with that. So do we have anything else interesting happening in August that could point to a possible Nintendo Direct? Actually, we have a ton of stuff, a ton of Mario stuff. Over on my Discord, Monkey wrote, Nintendo has planned releases on August 1st for Mario's 35th anniversary from multiple companies. Could that mean something else Mario related is coming on the horizon? Not saying anything is coming, just pinning for speculation reasons. Over on Twitter, at Cartridge Games wrote, August 1st has Lego Mario and all the expansions. Lego Super Mario Bros. NES, Mario Jenga, and Monopoly and Super Mario Gamer Chairs. Why August 1st specifically? And if you look, there is a ton of Mario stuff scheduled to get released on August 1st, including a bunch of Mario Lego stuff, some new Gamer Chairs, Mario Jenga, Mario Monopoly. Yeah, it's all coming out August 1st. So August 1st is a Saturday, so it's unlikely that will be a Nintendo Direct. However, having all this Mario merchandise come out and rumors of a possible August Nintendo Direct, it is very possible that the rumored 35th anniversary Mario games could get announced in August and coincide with all this merchandise. It would just be the right timing to do all that. So the specific date of a Nintendo Direct aside, we do have some new speculation going around about who our next Smash character might be. Over on Twitter, at Yeruith12 wrote me, Hey Papa, huge fan. This most likely means nothing, but I've noticed that Pokin Tournament is getting a free trial soon. We got an ARMS character released after an ARMS trial. New Pokemon fighter, possibly? So back on March 25th is when we got the Nintendo Direct, where we learned our next Smash character would be a fighter from the ARMS series. The next day on March 26th, we got a free game trial for ARMS, most likely to promote the character coming to Smash. Of course, that free ARMS trial happened after we were already announced that an ARMS character would be coming, but this actually isn't the first time this happened. On January 14th, it was announced Fire Emblem Warriors was getting a one-week free play for Switch Online subscribers in Japan. On January 16th, only two days later, we got Byleth revealed. So that free trial actually did happen before the character reveal on the 16th. Well, recently we actually did get another free game trial announced to us. Over on Twitter, at Nintendo of America wrote, The fight rages on. Hashtag Nintendo Switch Online members will be able to experience the full Pokemon fighting game, hashtag Pokemon Tournament DX, from 7.29 until 8.4 at 11.59 p.m. Pre-download the trial now. So from July 29th until August 4th, Pokémon Tournament is getting a free game trial, very similar to what happened with Fire Emblem Warriors and ARMS. And both Fire Emblem Warriors and ARMS got characters announced for Super Smash Bros. close to these free game trials. So could this free game trial for Pokémon be pointing to a Pokémon rep happening for Super Smash Bros.? I thought a Pokémon rep was extremely likely for this second Fighters Pass, however I wasn't sure when that would actually happen. But if it is going to coincide with this free game trial for Pokémon, that might be the next character to get announced. 
They could do something similar to what they did with the ARMS character and say the next character is from Pokken specifically and show off the Pokken roster and we'll have to speculate about which character from this game's roster we might get. However, even more likely to me than a Pokken rep would be that it might be a Pokemon Sword and Shield rep to promote the latest mainline games. The second Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC, The Crown Tundra, is still set to be released, so it would make sense if the next character was announced fairly soon here, maybe something like it's going to be a character from Pokemon, and then in a few months we actually get the character shown, and that Pokemon's reveal for Smash coincides around the same date as the second DLC for Sword and Shield, The Crown Tundra. Over on my Discord I wrote, yeah, I agree a Pokemon rep is likely happening. I figured one would always happen with this pass. The idea one is next is totally possible. I had suggested a Min Min Ursifu double reveal trailer, but then things started lining up for Mario reps. Seven Theory, the timing of a direct fitting with Waluigi and Paper Mario, though we are now past that point and getting closer to the reveal coinciding with the second Pokemon DLC. So yeah, it very well could happen. Which Pokemon we get, I don't know. I'd want Rillaboom or Toxtricity. Rillaboom to complete the starter trio plus a music-based moveset, and Toxtricity because he's cool for a new Pokemon. So for a while there, I've been talking about how Challenger Pack 7 might be a Mario rep character. However, that was always based on the timing of Waluigi's anniversary and the Paper Mario game coming out, things like that, and we're now past that timing. We're now getting closer to the second Pokemon DLC, so it would make sense if the seventh Challenger Pack character is a Pokemon character, it could be coinciding with that timing. Before Min Min was even shown off, I was saying a Min Min Ursifu double reveal might be what we get if that was planned at E3. So even back then, I was considering the idea of ARMS being followed up by the Pokemon rep for the second Fighter's Pass. Pokemon is another series where they could do what they did with ARMS, where they tell us it's a character from the series, but don't show off the character until the Sakurai presents. Pokemon sort of works for that because there's so many Pokemon characters. If they said it's a Pokemon from Sword and Shield, but we don't know who, there'd be quite a few options. Some of the more likely characters I would think would be Rillaboom because he fits that trio of fully evolved starter Pokemon. We already have Greninja and Incineroar. Rillaboom would complete that. Cinderace is also very popular though, so it could be Cinderace. Ursifu is a DLC Pokemon that's gotten a lot of attention, so I could see that happening. And Toxtricity is just a really popular Pokemon, my personal favorite from the Sword and Shield games, so I'd love to see that Pokemon get in as well. But if this free game trial theory is correct, and we do get a Pokemon rep being announced next for Smash, it really could be just about any Pokemon. And finally, just some Geno speculation, because I'm always into that. Over on Twitter, Inren Khan wrote, Stay with me here. What if Geno has been in Smash all along? What if he's just a Luma? So it's interesting to see someone like Inren Khan talking about Geno. Inren seemed to have known that Min Min was coming next and put out a cryptic tweet that showed that. So it's really cool to see a insider like that, someone who might actually have knowledge of which Smash characters we could be getting, talking about Geno and Smash. The whole concept that Geno could actually just be a Luma is nothing new to Geno fans. This is something that's been theorized for years. The whole idea that Geno works for a higher authority and that higher authority could potentially be Rosalina and Geno might have been a Luma as he is a star spirit. It's some cool Mario lore that I'm sure a lot of fans would love to see. If Geno's reveal trailer involved Rosalina and a Luma and somehow, you know, that possessing a doll and becoming Geno, I think a lot of fans would love having that lore connected. Of course, I can think up about a million good reveal trailers for Gino, and having him tie into Rosalina's lore is just one of them. Alright guys, well that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Have you seen that gigantic Nintendo leak? Have you actually looked around the internet and seen that stuff? If you have any thoughts on any of the specifics there, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And then what do you guys think about that free game trial theory, the idea that Fire Emblem Warriors and ARMS got free game trials, and we're now getting one for Pokken. Could we be getting a Pokemon character announced for Smash next? If you guys have any thoughts or comments about any of the stuff I talked about in this video, leave them below. So once again, thank you guys for all the subscribes, all the likes, uh, it really helps out the channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do so, or like the video, or leave a comment, whatever you want. Uh, until next time, have a good one.